Welcome to this video on the casts of the Abyssal Exalted from the tabletop role-playing game, Exalted. The Abyssals are an abhorrence, a thing that should not be but are, the sign that the Second Age is coming to a close. When the Death Lords cracked open the Jade Prison holding the Solar Exaltations, they claimed 100 of them for themselves. The Neverborn could not create Exalts of their own, but they could and would corrupt those created by their faithless servant, the Unconquered Son. One hundred of these Death Knights were given to the Death Lords, they who had once been Solars themselves. The Death Knights were champions who still live, but are bound to death, to usher creation to oblivion, so that the Neverborn may finally have the peace of nothingness. But without further ado, the Casts of the Abyssal Exalted. The Dust Cast The West is where the Unconquered Sun goes to die, his blood trailing behind him as the Blade of Night approaches to end his life. And the Dust Cast are the Blades of the Abyss, bringing the peace and silence of death to creation, whether they want it or not. The Children of Ash stand as some of the deadliest warriors in creation and the Underworld, whether by sword or axe or bow or spear or fist or a hundred other weapons, they are driven or compelled to snuff out life. They are killers, either of gods or men or armies or cities, and few can stand before the peace bringers and keep their lives. The Death Lords choose their warrior priests from among those who are not only comfortable spilling blood, but also crave it. Gladiators, assassins, hardened duelists, warlords, and even poets who will compose hymns to the Malfians as they strike their enemies down. The Dust Cast exalts in a similar way. At the moment of defeat in life, they are offered a chance to escape death, to rise again, stronger, faster, and more cunning, if they will deliver death to others. They are called the Ascending Darkness, because to stop killing triggers the dark curse within them. Even those who seek to defy the Death Lords and the Malfians and pledge themselves to slay only the wicked find themselves struggling against a tide of malice that they cannot kill their way through. Few souls find salvation in death, only an end. Those who seek to serve their never-born masters well find themselves with no shortage of work to do or favor to win. After all, there is always something that needs to be killed and most Death Lords reward efficient and obedient service. However, the Dust Cast are best kept away from matters that require a subtler touch. When not sent on missions of slaughter and conquest, the Dust Cast hone their skills on training exercises, war games, and weapons tests. Once the real war on creation begins, it will be the duty of those who sing forsaken hymns to drown creation in rivers of blood. The Dust Cast, like their solar counterparts, can use their animas to provoke terror in all enemies who are capable of feeling fear. The Midnight Cast In the midnight hour, the unconquered sun lies silent in his tomb, buried, until his inevitable resurrection at dawn. Until then, darkness and silence and shadows reign over creation. The Midnight Cast give glory and thanks for this peaceful repose from the hated sun, and promise that the deep, all-consuming silence of the Abyss will grant ultimate peace to all creation, the peace of nothingness. The Children of Silence are the High Priests of the Neverborn, and their faith gives them endurance against all trials and travails. They are denied the revelation of true death until they spread the gospel of oblivion to all creation, a creation which they will then bury. But mortals are fearful of death. They hide from it, resist it, deny its inevitability, so when Rhetoric fails to teach them, the Midnight Cast glorify death through mass murder, leaving towns and cities in ruins as blighted shadowlands, or both. Those mortals who open their hearts to death's majesty are given the duty to draw others into secret worship of the Death Lords and the Neverborn, each death cult a little tumor inside of creation, waiting to explode into a full-on cancerous growth, a useful network for the Abyssals and their Death Lord Masters to exploit. Many Abyssals were already worshippers of death before they received the Black Exaltation. Others were blessed with the silent whispers of the Neverborn, given the terrible truth of oblivion, and invited to serve creation's true masters. 
when exalts of the resplendent darkness shirk their death lord's rule, it is less often from regret for what they become, and more so from righteous zeal for annihilation. Some death lords are more interested in ruling a broken creation than in destroying it. For renegade midnight castes, this is simply unacceptable. Others are more practical and seek to join the Death Lords as rulers of the world of ash and bone and darkness. Perhaps one day the Midnight Cast will even dare to dream of supplanting the Death Lords, but not quite right now. Where the Zenith Cast consecrates the souls and sanctifies the bodies of the dead, the Midnight Cast desecrates and damns them. With but a touch, a Midnight Cast can guarantee that a corpse will rise soon after as a zombie. They may also slay mortals who dare to get too close to them with but a look. The Daybreak Cast At the break of day, the unconquered sun is reborn. As he emerges from his tomb, the darkness is forced to retreat, tactically for a time, leaving only the shadows to shelter the creatures of darkness and their secrets from his hateful eye and spears of light. The Daybreak Cast likewise shields the secrets of the underworld from the light using them as weapons against creation. While the Death Lords are brilliant and mighty, the Children of Bone are the architects and engineers of some of the Underworld's most terrifying engines of war and torment, building the weapons that will, eventually, break down the gates of creation. Daybreak casts also seek to master the deeper secrets of necromancy, traveling to the darkest parts of the Underworld to pluck new spells or insights from powerful ghosts, or even from the tombs of the Malfians. In creation, the descending darkness uses the land and the living as one massive testing ground for their spells and inventions. The result is usually dead armies and ruined landscapes that not only cannot sustain life, but are actively hostile to it. The daybreak cast are taken from those who are already unperturbed by forbidden knowledge, who are willing to violate the graves of ancient exalts, steal from the libraries of sorcerers, cut open the bodies of the living and aware, and consort with demons for the sake of gaining new knowledge. Those who work unclean arts are some of the best patronaged of the abyssals. The Death Lords have no lack of tasks or soul steel or other resources available to daybreak casts who can give them an edge over their rivals in the underworld and creation. Perhaps it is a quirk learned from their Death Lord masters or an aspect of their own exaltations, but the daybreaks are not merely content to acquire knowledge but to deny it to others. This results in burned libraries, slain scholars, and destroyed tombs. After all, knowledge becomes more valuable when it is in fewer hands. Like their twilight counterparts, the Daybreak cast may use their animal banners as a shield against attacks, absorbing or even turning aside lethal blows. The Day Cast when the Unconquered Sun resumes his rule, banishing the shadows from his sight, the living arrogantly believe that they are safe from the darkness. But in the heart, there is a place to hide dark that no ray of light will ever reach. The day cast are the underworld's hungry wolves, who can hide themselves among the living sheep and cut them from the herd. The Children of Blood are most often used as the secret enforcers of the Death Lords, maintaining discipline and obedience to their dread masters by watching listening, and slaying. Some even have aptitudes for intelligence and counterintelligence, so they are sent to spy on the doings of other Death Lords, and occasionally as saboteurs among them. In creation, the hidden darkness performs similar functions, stealing what their masters require, listening where they need ears, and bringing death to those whom the Death Lords require killed, where armies and necromancy either cannot reach or would not be practical. The day cast can seal their deadly work behind a hundred seemingly harmless masks. Commonly, the day cast are drawn from hunters, spies, assassins, murderers, and revolutionaries. Those who succeed with cunning and a cold heart. Of course, as the day cast spend most of their time among the wretched living than other abyssals, they are more likely to develop, uh, let's say, inappropriate attachments. But the dark fate that ties them to their never-born masters inevitably intervenes, and they must do their master's bidding, or suffer some tragedy for their defiance. Some death lords have encouraged their decast servants to turn against them, so that it may harden their hearts through suffering and loss, 
and then allow them to slink back to their master's feet, properly sharpened by loss and devoid of any shred of affection for the living. The day walkers can conceal their usage of charms behind their animal banners, though they must expend more essence than normal to do so. Like the solar night cast, they can also use their anima to conceal their movements and identities. The Moon Shadow Cast On the day of the final victory, the unconquered sun will lie dead, never to rise again. Luna will shroud her face in mourning, and the five maidens will bear witness to the fate of the sun, and all creation will glimpse the eternal darkness that awaits them. The abyssals of the Moon Shadow Cast spread death wherever they go, seeking to unite all beings in anticipation and trepidation of the Great Destroyer. The Children of Dust are the Death Lord's emissaries, seeking to win others to their side with bargains and lies and intimidations. They also manage the domains of their terrible masters, ensuring that their underworld kingdoms and subsequent war machines function smoothly, keeping a tally of who to ally with, who to betray, who to bribe, who to placate, who to seduce, and who to intimidate. Everyone and everything who crosses the path of one of these diplomats of death is just another piece in their games. In creation, the Moon Shadow cast lay the groundwork for its eventual fall to oblivion. They spread lies and cultivate mistrust. They prevent trade and government from functioning smoothly. A few mortals are even willing to knowingly ally with the Death Lords in exchange for an advantage over their rivals or the promise of a place within the new regime. To those who walk in the webs of deception, it does not matter one bit if one town is spared today so that another may fall. Eventually, all of creation will receive the gift of death. Every exalt of the hollow darkness is a cunning manipulator, full of lies and half-truths, building conspiracies and terrorizing enemies. Curiously, abyssals tend to rally around the moon shadow cast rather than the midnight cast. In addition to being the procurers and ambassadors of their circles, few trust the Midnight Cast with their penchant for hearing the voices of the Malfians more loudly than of other abyssals. Additionally, the Moon Shadow Cast may appropriate the charms of other magical beings, such as exalts, ghosts, elementals, and spirits, provided that they meet the prerequisites and have a willing tutor. Willing, however, is a very flexible term where the abyssal exalted are concerned and they do have their own unique ways of compelling obedience. And those were the castes of the Abyssal Exalted. The Abyssals are a product of the Second Age, an example that the defeated Primordials cannot create exalts of their own, but they can corrupt the exaltations for their own purposes. Point for point, the Abyssal Exalts are more powerful than the Solars, at least where killing and destroying are concerned. They also have all of the tutelage and resources of the Death Lords, some of whom remember that they were Solars once and the rulers of creation. The Abyssals are a great avenue of play as they can either be true believers of the Neverborn's cause and desire to release their masters from their suffering by destroying the fetter that binds them to the underworld, creation itself, or they can be champions of death who seek to help the dead pass, or they can remind the living to honor those who have gone ahead of them in death. The Abyssals are bound not by the great curse that afflicts other exalted, but by the power of the Neverborn to destroy and keep destroying until creation is finally no more. Yet there are paths to redemption for the Abyssals, even if they do not realize it yet. After all, the solar exaltation can be purified just as it can be corrupted, and the servants of the underworld can return to the light if they want it and are willing to struggle for it. And how mighty would a champion of the unconquered sun be, completely freed from the shackles of the great curse and the dark fate of the abyssal exalted? Anyway, that's all I have for now. Until next time.